Peter, I'm going back to you. Uh, this is round two. Um, and um, it's a question which probably you know, continues uh, from what you already said in the first round. Um, you're also, you know, you're a major, but you're also a natural resource management consultant, and you're an ardent conservationist, which I know personally. Uh, you're deputy chair of the ICN Commission on Ecosystem Management, and you know, you're also up for elections, eh, for the chair. Um, yeah. Uh, the question then is, to what extent is the ecosystem management approach useful for a peace mission like that of you know, the NATO in Afghanistan? Um, how would you explain that to your, your colleagues, your comrades in arms, uh, how to convince them that this approach indeed you know, is good for lasting peace in that difficult part of the world? Yeah, well, I think to start off, I think it's good to, um, to cite two questions that uh, were very uh, much, uh, very often asked during my two missions there. Last year when I came in, I was the first uh, expert to deal with agricultural development there because there's never a question for environmental expertise so far within that NATO unit. Um, but anyway, I was there and I, of course I looked into agriculture from an ecosystem management point of view given my background. And the question was, uh, well, Pete Witt is there, the first functional specialist agriculture, so now we will solve our poppy growing problem. Yeah. After, oh, wow. after Pete Witt, no <laughs> more poppies. No. That's a, that's a question that year. And last this year, we had a serious drought problem in Afghanistan. And uh, so it was Pete Witt that would bring water. Now we get Pete Witt back again a second time. This time, he's going to help us to bring water to Afghanistan. I th I'm afraid in both cases, I must have disappointed them. Now, how did I deal with that? I think you don't need to, to go to go very far for your uh, farmers to explain to them that the whole system is very complicated. They know that very well. Only they don't consider it. They, um, you have a, a farmer in the north uh, near Chora that is taking half of the water from the river during this dry season for about uh, 4,000 people um, living in, in it and the other 100,000 living downstream ha stream have to deal with the other half of the water. There's no system to deal with that. If you explain that to them, of course, they understand it very well, but then, uh, then you come into the political and the, and the in fact, conflict context to, to change it. Another example is that um, we, our military people, uh, before I was there, they would uh, quite rapidly dig a well because people would be very happy and they would ask for a well and then they would uh, put a diesel pump on it and that might draw, uh, draw down the groundwater table is 20, 30, 40 meters sometimes, which uh, would then uh, affect the underground irrigation system, the Karishis, so that there is one family, a rich family, that is having a good land where you can irrigate one, two hectares of land, and there may be 50 families having no water anymore from their underground irrigation system. And that's More a recipe for conflict? There's a recipe for conflict, for sure, because there is, as I said already in my first intervention, there is no leadership. There's no one to, to, to deal with these type of issues. Moreover, in, in order to make enough money to pay for your diesel, you have to grow poppy. Yeah? <laughs> so, and poppy is linked to Taliban and mafia and so on and so on. So, there, so if my answer is, yes, I did use the ecosystem approach, and I explained it to them uh, by concrete examples, like this one, telling them that there is ecosystem management means that you're dealing with institutional aspects, with marketing aspects, with uh, F impacts beyond your own impact area and so on. There's, so it's crossing borders in many ways, crossing sectors, crossing disciplines. Secondly, I wrote a strategic uh, development plan for Afghan uh, for Uruzgan, uh, which was based on, the, on three things. First, conserving the resource base, land and water management. Uh, uh, second, sustainable use. And thirdly, sustainable institutions, including land and use systems, cadastres, and all these type of things. And I was very proud when I came back this year that I saw how this plan was used not only by the Dutch Army, but also by um, the friends from Australia, the Army, the Americans used it for their, as a basis for their political uh, policy in Uruzgan. And uh, most importantly, I think, the director of the Department of Agriculture of Uruzgan said, this is my plan, and I, I, I left it like that. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. I think you earned your promotion to a colonel. <laughs> <laughs> I will be the oldest one. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not going to ask you, you know, whether you're optimistic or pessimistic about what's going to happen in that the ecosystem approach should be a part of it, you know, that's very clear. It's at least a necessary condition 
but well, maybe I, not yet. I don't want to answer to that, no? quest, to that question if okay. I'm optimistic or pessimistic because I have that's the advantage. These soldiers are there for four to six months. I've been there now uh, last year, this yeah. year, and I'll go there yeah. back next year, yeah. inshallah, I should say. Yeah. But um, And I can see the difference. And last year we had, and every morning briefing, we had uh, briefings about uh, fire contacts with the uh, opposing military forces during two and a half months. This year there was none. We had bombs, sure, and we had last year's too. Uh, but most importantly, last year Karinkaut was a rather sleepy town. This year Karinkaut was a very busy town. Mm -hmm. People were investing in their own environment. Okay. Farmers were investing in their farms. And I think oh. that's a very good sign, that's, is a sign that stability brings development. Okay, thank you. Message of hope, very good.